What's good? What's happening? Welcome to another episode of The Village Show. Thank you very much for engaging. I see people are liking the show. You know what I'm saying? I really appreciate your guys' love. I really appreciate appreciate your subscribing. I really appreciate you guys commenting and actually liking. Thank you very much for that. Don't forget to let us know what you want us to talk about. Because this is a show too. You know what I'm saying? I want to have a conversation with you. And you guys are responding very, very well, which I like. You know what I mean? Today... on the village show we got some really really cool things you know as always we're gonna review some videos again this is women's month in, in south africa we just had women's day you know what i'm saying so we're gonna be really appreciating some of the females that i actually really look up to and really respect when it comes to you know what i mean the art of music we're gonna review again another you know trailer for a movie that came out i think in february sometime you know what i mean very very cool movie we're gonna be reviewing you know what i mean we're gonna talk a little bit about some Local government, somebody hit me up on WhatsApp and they were like, yo, let's start a conversation about local governments. You know what I mean? So let's start it there so we can start, you know, you know, letting people know that they can be part of the conversation, actually be part of the change because it starts with their community. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. You know what I'm saying? And as always, I got a book for you. You know what I mean? Again, this is one of those that everybody probably have to read, you know, always have. And you know what I'm saying? We're going to talk about some African history as part of our segment again like i said thank you for joining me thank you for being with me much love i really love you guys i really you know appreciate everything that you do for me today on the review man we got you know uh miss rapper uh again i had the privilege of actually meeting miss rapper you know she they released the music video of the song dilemma featuring property so the name of the song is dilemma featuring property um this is a very very dope music video you know i hope you guys are gonna enjoy this again on our theme of appreciating women i feel like she's really really dope at what she does you know what i mean i like her image i like everything about her the music video is pretty cool you know what i'm saying they have like you know a lot of like nice colors for example the reds and the blues you know what i mean they play around with a lot of like vintage kind of like footage looking but it was shot really really well the props you know what i mean drone shots the car shots everything was fire let me not even say a lot you know what i'm saying let me just let you watch the music video you check what i mean listen the funds are secured you have the package on you yeah look at secured. that you know I'm what I mean? the robbers the green everything no is more. just popping up let's take over to the top See that, that's cool. Oof. Oof. This shot's man. dramatic, like movie style, kind of like cinematic. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Ooh. Bring, bring my pain into the light Been the creature of the night For the bag, it's been a fight But I guess that we alright We okay, we alright Oh, we okay, we alright We okay, we alright Well, I guess that we alright It's proper restraint Success is always certain Beat got smacked so I get the shit hurting These get signed and I do it in person TV smacked so we gotta go lurking Only profits that I've been serving Never had doubt so I gotta put work in Ooh, I got the gig I swear finally I feel purpose Bitch, I owe my shit till it's perfect no bullshit, uh, But none of it is, though You're my older brother, and I love you But don't ever take sides with anyone Against the family, ever Ooh, bring, bring my pain into the light Been the creature of the night For the bag, it's been a fight But I guess that we alright We okay, we alright Oh, we okay, we alright yeah, We okay, right we alright Well, I guess that yeah, we alright I think it's been clear I can see the shit that one's really there Plotting moves so the money clears I hear people talking and it's from the rear I back it up, make it so sincere I really Let's bought go. it and I'm really here You can't Let's claim go. what you don't got But then again, Let's you only go. claim parts Your name comes up with the what nuts Your face tightens what not? Yeah. Don't need no trick on my sleeve. I do it with ease. They doubt and I leave them on leave. Remember, what? I take no defeat. That's fast to believe. I rap and I give no relief. Ask a nigga because I gave him relief. My focus on me, never on he. Yeah. Yeah, it's some dope shit. That's, this is some really, really cool shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
That's Dilemma right there, Rampa Futuring Property. This is a pretty cool music bring, bring. I like it, I like the feel of it, I like the against the look of it. You check what I mean, I like the song, you know what I mean? Uh, the colors, like I said, the greens, how they, you know what I mean? The dark at night, kind of like shorts, you know what I mean? That's very, very nice. Again, go support rapper, you know what I mean? Go and subscribe to a new YouTube page. Make sure that you engage with their content. This music, uh, there's a lot of music there. Please make sure that you engage with the music, you know what I mean? This is some really, really dope talent that is out there. You check what I mean? While we're still on the, you know what I mean? I really appreciate you guys, like I said. You know what I mean? So in the music side, I got another, another, you know what I mean? This this lady, you know, there was a time when she was performing and I had the, the privilege of being there and to be able to take part in actually mixing her music. Um, I've never been so touched emotionally when it comes to music. Like music really touches me emotionally, but what she did, you know, I had to step away and actually shed a tear a little bit because of just how she sings and her passion and her voice, the music, how everything just comes together, the band, you know what I mean? But there's a song that I'm gonna play for you guys today, you know what I mean? The song is Kondenze, you know, her name is Zoo. Again, you can go and check out Zoo on Instagram, check out Zoo on YouTube, you know, check out Zoo on Apple Music, Spotify. Her music is really, really doing, you know, really good, you know, so deservedly so, you know what I mean? Like I said, these are people who are really, really talented. They deserve to get in your people's ears. You know what I mean? So, Zoo, let me not say a lot. Let me not waste your guys' time. You know what I'm saying? Just enjoy this. This this song, right? Please make sure that you go and engage with their music. She got beautiful music videos in her page, you know. I mean, very, very talented. You know, I rate her like she's one of my, you know, top five musicians. You know, point blank period. Whenever I'm feeling down, whenever I'm feeling like I need to get up and do what I have to do, I just listen to Zoom and she, she, she nourishes my spirit. You check what I mean. Again, thank you. Don't forget again to put your questions down in the comments so that we can deal with it. You know, I mean, the question that I deal with it today, which is part of like the, the, the topic for, for our day today, is something that somebody was talking to me on WhatsApp about, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, they were just asking me some questions in terms of what I think about, you know, where the country is, government. I don't really, 
usually talk about politics because you know what I mean there's there's a lot of times that when you talk about it people tend to take it another way or feel attacked which is not my point of view so i tend to not speak about it but i realize that's you know part of the problem because if i have a platform and a voice to actually you know engage with people i have to talk about some of the things that everybody's talking about you know what i'm saying so that we can actually help each other and we can see a way out nothing i'm saying is facts nothing i'm saying it's you know what it is this is just my opinions this is just how i feel about things you are allowed to go in the comments and actually disagree with me which is you know i would like that to happen so that we can be able to transfer knowledge you know what i'm saying and share knowledge this is not an attack on anybody so i had to say that you know what i'm saying because i know people out there are gonna do what people do you know what i'm saying but just look out government i'm from a uh, you know, a lot of you who know me, if you don't know me, I'm from a village in Limpopo, Venda, South Africa, called Doridori. Every very small village, you know what I mean? Not a, not a huge population. I don't think there's even more than 5,000 people in that small village. But there's a lot of, like, villages next to each other in the ward, you know, which is Ward 37. So I grew up basically under what we call a tribal ruling, where you have a chief and everything about the village get discussed in the chief it's still like that you know what i'm saying still like that but there is like government there is councillors there is you know things like civics where government is represented in the community but those things are not really that active as the tribal people still respect you know what i mean the, the the chief which is good because they're the owners of the land but you know there needs to be a different way of governance for us to be able to 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 to, to progress mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I'm I'm not gonna speak about townships or certain places because I don't really know how that works. I can only speak about where I'm from. You check what I mean? So like I said, it's still a very, very small village, very, very far in terms of coming to, you know, when it comes to development. You know, one of the reasons why I do this is because I, I really wanna people to know like there's still places in South Africa that exist that certain things are really a struggle. You know, like when I'm at home, I struggle to get even like proper cell phone network. I can call somebody, but I can't, I can't go online. You know, I can't even send a WhatsApp message. Sometimes I have to wait hours for that to happen. You know what I mean? It, sometimes it's a blessing for me because I take it as a retreat and actually just, you know what I mean, uh, cut off. But I do believe that if that was there, it could, it could, it could stimulate certain things in, in our community. We deal with a lot of things that most communities deal with. You know, what I mean, alcohol abuse, you know, from from the kids, you know, teenage pregnancy, you know, what I mean, uh, the success rate of people who go to school or finish their studies and actually go into the job market, local businesses being able to sustain themselves, you know, development, education, you know, what I mean, uh, you know, advanced technologies, you know, all of those things is still a struggle. For example, like if you take one of the high schools or if you take maybe four of the high schools in the vicinity of all of those uh, villages, you'll find that they don't even have a basic computer course, you know, which for me in 2022, I think, you know, that's not something that should be happening. You know, I don't feel like you can survive in this climate and environment we're living in without understanding at least the basics of computers you know so that for me is a real big thing and that's one of the things that i'm trying to mobilize as many people who have the same belief as me the people who see things the way i see them or even have ideas that are probably beyond me about developing our own communities where we can start giving these things back you know so a lot of people have this thing of actually blaming generations and saying the last generation didn't do it. Sometimes people just don't know. You know, I was lucky enough to be exposed to certain information and knowledge and be able to be to be outside of the village for me to see a different perspective. You know what I'm saying? To see the need, to see, you know, those, those places are still very, very rich. It's the mentality and the paradigm shift that we have to change so that we can start being our own local governments, being able to make decisions about what we need, how we need it, what quality we need it, like, because we deserve these things. And if we are able to mobilize and stand together, for, you know, mostly youth, you know what I'm saying, to come together, we can be able to localize. I don't blame the government. I don't blame anybody in any position. It's, 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 a, it's a mindset, it's, it's a mindset, you know, thing. You know, so if you get a leader from 
the community who has never seen a different perspective, they're going to lead the way they know because they don't, you know what I mean? They don't know any other perspective. So our, 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 you know, thing is to just get our voice heard, you know, to be part of the conversation for us to raise certain things, you know? So like I said, skills development is one of the biggest thing we don't have where I'm from. And I'm seeing a lot of communities suffering from this, where you get a lot of youth who are going to school, getting these qualifications, but they don't really skilled enough to be able to do what they need to do because the skill is not really developed. Or either the skill is developed, but they can't use the skill to benefit their own communities because their own communities doesn't really have an economy. So they are forced to actually go somewhere else to work and you know just come back with whatever they have left after they work you know what i mean for example i had to come to joe back have to come to work at joe back i pay rent everything i do here i spend most of my time here than i do at home which doesn't really sit well with me you know what i mean the fact that i can only practice or be able to do what i do here and not be able to do it in that capacity at home is something that again we're trying to to, to start making it a conversation around the youth. You know what I mean? We need to start learning these skills and taking these skills back home to benefit our people. Generation after generation, we've just been following the same trend, you know? Finish school, go to school, find a job in a city, work your whole life and never go home, retire, go home, and then you know what happens after that. I don't want that. I want the youth to actually develop our own you know, communities, make sure that we, we take everything in our hands. You know, I, I would like to send a shout out to Jaulan Mashota, you know. Uh, we have so many conversations about the community. He's very passionate. He's very into community building. From since we were in school, I went to school with him in boarding school. He was really, he lived his truth. If he didn't agree with it, he didn't agree with it. And he will make sure that it's known. Sometimes putting himself on, you know, in risk of being expelled. But he was talking the truth. And I'm saying, so I still keep in touch with him. I have conversation with him. One of these days, I'm going to have a one-on-one -on -one with, with him and then I will share with, with you guys. But that's just another thing, the way I look at it when it comes to local governments. Is, uh, govern, uh, governments. We're not really you know, stimulated economically and empowered when it comes to information to understand what we can do to make our communities better. And even if we are informed and we have the information, it's so... I don't want to say it's hard. It's a very, very long process to get to those things that we deserve, you know? Like, you know, if you ask for funding and you do go through the proper processes, there's so many things. And one thing that's really what I found in my journey of trying to, to go through these processes is the lack of information and information not being disclosed. It's what gives us that gap. You know, because we waste a lot of time trying to find information that's supposed to be free, information that's supposed to be shared all the time. But it's, it's a struggle to find it because of resources and infrastructure and a lot of things. So it ends up most of the people kind of like giving up and just, you know, uh, defaulting to what they know or what they believe is the best thing they can do for themselves. You know what I mean? So that's just my, my, my thought on that. You know what I'm saying? Today on what's the hassle? While we're still on local government, it's puzzle shops. You know, in the past, I will say a year, two years, I've been investigating spaza shops because I feel like spaza shops are, you know, uh, a stepping stone to a bigger business. And sometimes spaza shops are really, really helping a lot of South Africans in terms of, you know, being breadwinners and actually having money coming into families. Not only just that, but saving communities in making sure that they have the necessities and what they need. You know, in the past kind of like months, there's been a lot of talks in terms of business like that. You know, the old ladies who are selling in the streets, you know, those are like the small puzzle shops. You know, it might be, you know, specific things that they're providing, but there's a family behind that that has been taken care of. So, on what's the hassle? I feel I feel like we need to start looking at spazas as part of our you know our culture and really supporting that movement because that movement creates you know uh, a certain infrastructure and an economy in a community. You know every community you go to has a spaza and probably somebody who's running that is taking care of a family, be able to take kids to school, be able to take you know people to skill developments. And one thing that I've realized is what I like about South Africa again is. Again, it's just information. This is cool things that are there. The government has a fund that is funding people to start these puzzle shops and to help them to kind of like scale them up to, to, to supermarkets and even chains so that they can start securing their, their, their own food security. Because puzzle shops kind of like help us with that. 
you know, you know, the necessary things you need, the bread in the morning, the eggs, you know, the cooking oil, the airtime, the candle when there's no shedding, all of those small things, these puzzles are providing for us, even though the supermarkets, you know, so like, for example, in communities where all of these big franchises and these big companies, like you pick and paste and spas are not going, these puzzle shops are actually providing people with whatever they need. So again, you know, if you're out there and you're looking for a hassle, puzzle shops are really something that you have to look at look at look at getting a funding from the government you know i think they have a fund that starts from 8k to like 10k to even 15k that helps you with starting up and having stock and some even entrepreneurship or even internship where they can take you through the process of learning how to actually handle your business because we need to start making our own jobs we need to start making our own incomes we need to start owning stuff because we can't just keep on looking for jobs if any no one is making jobs all of us are looking for jobs, but who's making the jobs? We have to make the jobs. Some of us have to make the jobs. We have to create these opportunities. And this is why this segment was the hustle is so important so that we can actually inform people out there that we have to create this workforce. We can't just rely on the government. It's impossible for the government to do it by itself. Even if they try, it's impossible. They need to acknowledge that. And I feel like they do. So we need to take it upon our hands to understand that we have to create these jobs. Whatever job it is, we just have to make sure that we are there and we are creating that. You know what I'm saying? Cool. Book time. Whew. That, that was a, that was a, <laughs> a passionate word that right there. You know what I'm saying? Um, so when it comes to book time, uh, again, sticking to the theme of, you know, spaza shops and hustle and stimulating our economy. Today, I have a book that a lot of you probably have heard about. Uh, if you haven't heard about this book, please make sure that you go get this book. I'm not even going to say a lot about this one. Let me just put it there so the light is going there. You guys see that? That's Rich Dad Poor Dad. You know, that's another Bible of mine. Um, that's another book that, you know, I'll tell you the story of how I actually got this book. Um, somebody was reading this book, and I saw them reading this book, and I asked for the book. I just wanted to start conversation with them because for me, first, first thing first, if somebody's reading this book, there's something they're trying to achieve. You know what I mean? They're trying to be independent. They're trying to understand how economics uh, economics work. I asked her for a book. I didn't think she would give me the book. She said, you can go read the book and give me the book, not knowing that she was really interested. And she's very, very smart uh, female. And I'm, I'm, I'm really blessed to have met her. You know what I'm saying? But um, So yeah, I read the book. And again, this became one of those books that I just recommend it to everybody. And if you want to be in business, whether even if you don't want to be in business, even if you just want to work, this will make you the best. And you will understand economics. You'll understand how money works. You'll understand how wealth is created, which is a big thing. So Rich Dad, Poor Dad, again, one of those. Like, I just opened a page. See, there's a lot of like highlights. You know what I mean? So so that you guys can see, I'm opening a random page. I'm just going to go while I'm looking at you guys and open a random page. You know what I'm saying? So, for example, I've watched people get the right opportunity card and then not have enough money. Then they complain that they would have gotten out of the red race if they had had more money. So they sit there. I know people in real life would, would do that also. They see all the great ideas all the great deals, but they have no money. And I have seen people pull a great opportunity card, read it out loud, and have no idea that it is a great opportunity. Like I said, you know, these books are just, just that. You know, it's a great takeaway. Like a lot of my economics, how I handle my business, how I restructured everything is based on this. You start understanding cash flow in the basics. This is like a, a very, very easy read. It might be daunting to a lot of people thinking, you know, rich dad, poor dad is about economics, but I never was really interested in how they taught me economics at school. But when I read this, it made me really interested. It makes you understand how money is made. It makes you understand how once you start getting to the other side of making money, there's certain information that becomes common sense. That's not common sense. Because I always say, like the books say, you know, you it's not about you having money. You poor in mind or you're rich in mind. You know, how you understand things like compound interest understanding how you know your care flow what is real assets and what is real liabilities 
and how bank systems works, how people use credit. You know what I mean? Some of us were made you know, to be scared of credit for good reason, because a lot of people around us were using credit very wrong. You know what I mean? But it's not a, something to fear. You know, this will equip you with the, you know what I'm saying, what you need for you to be able to, to maneuver, you know, the, the world of business, right? So that's that's the book there, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, like I said, on the movie side, you know, I love I love movies, I love series, I love entertainment, and I love people who dedicate their life into entertaining and get rewarded for that. So I have a trailer. The name of the movie is called Tando. Uh, the movie, I think, is about basically what happens in a lot of our high schools, bullying and trying to fit in and trying to 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 get out yourself out of poverty. For example, girls you know, dating older guys and having corrupt principles and things not being dealt with at schools, you know, teachers sleeping with, with, with kids at school. I love the message behind it because this is really things that kids deal with at school. And to some families, these are not easy for kids to actually talk about because, you know, sometimes parents might think you're making excuses, but when people make movies about these things to try to share this information, this is what I love. So without me saying a lot, let me just play this trailer. And we'll talk a little bit about it. They say unlike a restaurant, life has a tendency of dishing out what you never ordered. That's where the expression, life is unfair, stems from. If I were to say life is unfair, it would be an understatement. You've been yellow boned. If you want to kill yourself, you must do it alone. I told Gogo I got a part-time job doing promotions over the weekends. Just like everyone who makes a deal with the devil, there is always a price to pay. <laughs> what are you doing as a school to prevent bullying? We should take it upon ourselves to conduct an internal investigation. Oh, one super dope super dope you know uh, again very very emotional movie um i haven't watched the movie but um i'm 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 keen to go and actually watch the movie um and and actually support the people who are actually spreading that message that's a very very good movie of things that are really happening bullying at schools you know people turning a blind eye like i say you know we we sometimes very hypocritical about things that we say and things that we do, you know, and most of the time what we say doesn't really matter. It's what we do that matters. You know, we know these things are happening in schools, but as long as it's not happening to our kids or our nieces, we cool until it happens to one of ours. And then we start blaming everything else. You know, we know about, you know, all of these things that we're still going to talk about and actually flesh out in this show. But Again, it's time we start, you know, taking ownership and, and taking accountability of ourselves, our communities, our, our world, our life, you know, and stop blaming every external thing. It starts with us, you know what I mean? It starts with every individual. If you're watching this, I know. But again, I love, I love that trailer. Let me, let me not be too much, you know what I'm saying? Let me not be too emotional and, 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 and start making you guys not do what that I think. So if you're liking this, comment. Uh, you know, what I mean, hit the likes, uh, the like button, you know, the notifications every Monday. Like I said, we're going to be dropping new episodes. That was the trailer, uh, trailer watch there. Today on Did You Know, I have really, you know, for those who, you know, uh, again, on the theme of wealth and building wealth and all of that, I had to pull this one out. A lot of people don't know this, but a lot of people do know this. You know, one of the richest men in Africa or the world, you know, in history Mr. Mansa Musa, you know, was from Africa and, you know, there's a lot of things that has been discovered in, in, in Mali, for example, the earlier civilization, its connection to Egypt, you know, and all of that, you know. So let me just read you something about this guy. Musa Keita one, Mansa Musa, which translates as kings of the kings or emperor of ancient Mali. Keita one was the 10th Musa of the Mansa dynasty. Under his rule, Mali became one of the wealthiest countries in the world. From their gold and salt production, agriculture and imperialistic nature, and dynamic trade location. The kingdom flourished. Forbes names, named him the richest man of all time. That's Forbes, you know, like, you know, the richest man of all time right there. Musa Keita one is famed with in, uh, enriching the great trading city of Timbuktu 
you know, some of you have heard me talk a lot about Timbuktu. Uh, you know, some of you might have, you know, landed a school if you know, I would like to visit Timbuktu. You know, I would like to go to Timbuktu one of these days. You know I mean, but I'm going to put it out there. We're going to go to Timbuktu. You know, establishing the library in Islamic university is very, very important. They had universities. They had libraries. This is things that are proven. You know, they had books there. They understood how to store information in books. They had universities where they were teaching people skills. You know, and a lot of studies were being done there. You know, astrology, maths, algebra, a lot of like, you know, core principles of how the world functions were being taught in those universities. His legendary pilgrimage to Mecca with over 60,000 attendants and lavish outpouring of gold to the poor across Sahel region. Egypt and the Middle East was chronicled by many and is suspected as what drew the attention of the Spanish crown and initial attraction of European to the West Africa. You know, this is the kind of like the, you know, the pinch of salt that comes with most of, you know, African stories. You know, a lot of people kind of like link the pilgrimage, you know, with, with, you know, the, the, the Western civilization, seeing the riches, you know, because he was really giving people gold. He was walking around with gold, you know, all over the place, you know, and they, they, were, they were really rich. And, you know, the Spanish have a history of actually conquering most of the nations that has that. You can take it back to even the Aztecs, you know, you can take it back to a lot of like treasures, you know, they, you know, you're always going to find like Spanish, like shipwrecks that has Spanish gold and, and pirates, you know, and that involvement. But Mansa Musa was one of the people who actually showed or the Western people kind of like show, saw these riches from. And some people actually kind of like blame him for, you know, the colonization of most of African countries and our, our minerals, right? Uh, and then made famous by... The Spanish map, which shows him holding a golden orb, Mansa Musa is also credited with initiating extensive building projects in Mali from palaces, mosques, and urban developments. So, like, democracy was there. They, they had a system of actually doing votes. They understood, you know, they, like they, kind of like the first, you know, civilization where there was, like, an economy being stimulated, economics being led, gold being processed, you know, hierarchy of power being... You know, that's another thing that a lot of people talk about when I talk about, when you know, when I have conversation with a lot of like African scholars, you know, uh, they talk about how Mansa Musa, you know, played a part in certain nations understanding the hierarchy of power and using the hierarchy of power to kind of like, you know, stamp on the poor and stuff like that. But I needed to let you know again, you know, uh, about some facts from Africa. This is Mansa Musa, uh, one, you know, the, the, the king of... Uh, Mali in Timbuktu, where they found a lot of like riches, you know, the richest man in the history of humankind. Uh, you know, there's if you watch documentaries about Mali, you know, there's people who are on the other side who don't really like him and people on the other side who like him. Just like, you know, you're not going to be liked by everybody in the world. But again, I just felt like that was something that you guys would be interested in. You know, so that's the show for today. You know, thank you for engaging with the show. Really appreciate you guys a lot. I uh, really appreciate your likes. I really appreciate your subscription. Share with your friends. You know, I mean, if this is a conversation or something that you feel like you can share and they can learn something from me, share it. You know, this is episode two. Again, go to YouTube and subscribe to Shitangani Productions. Every Monday, we're going to be dropping this series. We're going to be dropping the village show. Again, this is the show for you. Anything that you guys want us to talk about, hit me up. You can post on comments for those, you know what I mean, the knowledge that we have, making sure that people can access it. And if you're watching this and you're still watching this, I love you. You're dope. Stay great. You know what I mean? Peace. Check you out next Monday. Let's go.